Moin und herzlich willkommen zurück. Ambassador Spa, <lacht> Captain Solano, welcome to Hotari. We are honored you have come. My name is Tylos Altaris, Minister of Diplomatic Affairs. The honor is ours. And this is Commander Jara Rydek, first officer aboard the USS Resolute. You'll find she has a keen mind and unique insight into the dynamics between the Hotari and the Lydians. We are honored to be here as representatives of the Federation. These must be the representatives of the Federation, the reigning authority in the galaxy, or so we've been led to believe. Whether that's true or not remains to be seen. But, either way, we're grateful you've made the time to come to our little corner of the universe. And you are? This is Galvin, and this is Citron, the heroes of the revolt in the mines. Let's hope this is the last time we ever have to come here. If you'll excuse me. I think we're about to begin. Did you hear the arrogance from that guy? I don't know what we're walking into here. But that guy was something. Something about his tone tells me this won't be easy. That was my sense as well. I doubt he speaks for all of Atari. So I would urge patience until we speak with their queen. Ambassador Spock, welcome to Holtari Prime. The honor is mine, Your Majesty. That the Federation would send one of their most respected representatives is not only an honor to the Holtari people and their queen, but recognition of our stature and importance. Let's get on with it, shall we? With all due respect to the Federation and their ambassador, they have no authority here. We are not members of their alliance. We are not subject to their rule, nor yours. We demand the immediate return of all mining operations to Elydian control, as it has been for centuries and will be for centuries more. That has always been our understanding. That understanding has changed. Then you invite war. And if you cannot remain silent, you will be silenced. But his mm -hmm. point is well taken. What is the Federation's interest in this matter? Perhaps you would have us trade one oppressor for another? The Federation remains neutral. Our only interest is the peaceful resolution of this conflict. We are here at your request, Your Majesty. For now. Saying this wouldn't be easy was an understatement. I thought they wanted us here. Was there something you wanted to say, Captain? Oh, no. My apologies. And what about the Kobliad? She's not part She can speak for herself, can't she? Then let her. Warum geht man jetzt da hoch? Das haben die anderen auch nicht getan. Hm. 
Now then, what is your name? Commander Jara Rydek, Your Majesty. Being a Kovliad, you would know better than anyone. Your people suffered brutal treatment at the hands of the Cardassians. Their injustice towards the Kovliad is as unimaginable as it is unforgivable. Not unlike how we have been treated by the Alidians. As much as they'd have you believe they are the victims here, remember it was the Hotari who attacked us. Hundreds of innocent Alidians were slaughtered without mercy in those mines. The blood is on their hands, not ours. Quiet! If after all the Kobliad suffered, you finally had the chance to right that wrong, to get out from under their control, would you take it? Or would you negotiate a peace? Hmm. There is no remedy for what the Kobliad suffered. And I fear who we might have become in pursuit of it. There is no justice if the oppressed become the oppressor. So I would willingly accept a peaceful resolution if it were offered. That is the real opportunity. Perhaps, Commander Rydak. Perhaps. Unfortunately, that was not the case. Was it? No. It was not. Peace is often elusive to those who need it most. The Federation is the most powerful, most advanced alliance in the galaxy. It's widely known we have an abundance of dilithium in our minds. And it's in your interest to secure a steady supply. Your Majesty, if I may. Ambassador Spock would have us believe you're here as a neutral party in the interest of peace. So why are you really here? I want the truth, not your Federation rhetoric. I'm sorry, Your Majesty, but it's really not my place to say what the Federation's interests might be. You are their representative. I am. But Ambassador Spock is better suited to address your concerns. What they haven't said, but cannot deny, is a simple truth. The dilithium trade would not and will no longer exist without a Lydian involvement. We created it for the benefit of everyone, especially the Hotari. We've given them warp technology. We've let them share in the profits. We've made their lives infinitely better than before Dilithium was discovered. All of that goes away if the Federation turns a blind eye to their treachery. That is enough of your lies! The Hotari are quite capable of running the mines. We've done so for centuries. So tell me. Who deserves control of the dilithium trade and the mines on town? Who should the Federation recognize? The Hotari or the Alidians? Hmm. It can only be one or the other, not both. If there can only be one, then it would be in the best interest of all involved if the Alidians resumed operation of the mines. And that is why we should not trust our fate to the Federation. She speaks sense. You do well to listen to her. And you do well to hold your tongue. We will take back our minds by any means necessary. Then you will see more blood spilled. I am more than willing to address your concerns, Your Majesty. Yours as well, Representative. But I suggest we could have a more productive conversation with a smaller group. Perhaps only the most essential representatives. I would agree, Ambassador Spock. Jetzt hätt's da doch mal Action geben können, oder?
I think this is best left to those of us with more experience in diplomatic matters. Jetzt bloß, die sind alle wieder sauer. Das war meine Entscheidung, dazu stehe ich. Spock und ich werden alles auf der Seite der Diplomatik verhören. You make nice with the locals and see if you can get some answers. We need to find out why the Hotari are so willing to risk war. What happened in those mines? Ja, 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 jetzt hilft der schon mit der Sun. Kann ich wenigstens rennen? Jawohl! Also Wasser bewundern. Soothing. Commander, after hearing so much about the Federation's sense of fairness and justice, I was surprised that you sided with the Elidians. In all honesty, I expected more, especially from someone like you. Even though the Elidians should retain control. The Hotari have an equal claim, and should share in the profits, as partners. I'm afraid it's too late for that. I assume you were there, the day the mines were seized from the Elidians. Not seized. Reclaimed. And restored to their rightful owners. Yes, I was there. We had to be decisive. Before the Elidians could even realize their worst nightmares upon them. Did you have help from someone else? Otari stands alone against the Elidian forces. We don't need help from anyone. They respect one thing above all else, and that is force. The greater the force, the more certain the outcome. Any talk of making peace is just that. And worth little without the strength to secure it. Which makes me wonder about your ship, the Resolute. Undoubtedly the Federation's finest warship. Ready to contend with anything the Elidians might have in store. Or is that not true? Maybe I've misjudged it. It wasn't designed as a warship. More for scientific research and exploration. But the Federation must have ships designed for war. Technically, they're Starfleet ships representing the Federation. But yes. I see. Sidron. A pleasure meeting you, Commander. I'm sure we'll cross paths again. Commander Rydeck, I have to admit, I was surprised when you said the Elidian should control the dilithium trade. I was under the assumption the Federation was neutral, but maybe I was wrong. I can assure you, we aren't on anyone's side. We are, and will remain, completely neutral. You have my word. I hope that's true, for all of our sakes. I saw you speaking with Sidron, our national hero. I'm curious, what did he say? He seems to be of the opinion that negotiating for peace is a waste of time. Because force is the only blunt instrument he understands. He's a miner, not a diplomat. For the first time in our history, the Hotari have the upper hand. <clears throat> we see ourselves as strong instead of downtrodden. New voices have risen up. Old voices shouted down. Galvin and Sidron have become national heroes. Now they have the Queen's ear. Better or worse, depending on your perspective. I get the sense you don't exactly trust them. I don't trust their instincts, which are leading us to war. Mm hmm. My fear has been that the Elidians will launch an attack and crush us. You've seen their starship, no doubt. 
They could have retaken the mines whenever they wanted to. But it never happened. And as strange as this may sound, I'd almost say they're afraid. I just don't know what they're afraid of. It's still the same bluster and bravado you would expect from them. But it has no teeth. Like they're afraid of what might happen. Do you think it has something to do with the Ion Storm? Right now, it's stronger than ever, isn't it? It's entirely possible. I'm not a scientist, but I do know the storm has knocked out all kinds of systems. So maybe the Illidians weren't willing to risk their ships, given all the interference. Since the day of the revolt, Galvin has seized control of the mines and restricted all access. No one's allowed without his personal authorization. And they've taken over a section of the palace with just as much secrecy and security. I'm told it could be something they brought back from the mines. I've made inquiries, but everyone pretends it doesn't exist. I strongly suspect they're hiding something. What do you think it is? I've heard rumors it's some sort of ancient artifact, but I haven't seen it myself. How can we know? I'd better see what's happening. Do you think you can find out what they're hiding? I need to see proof of something before I can make my case to the Federation. I can try, but even if I found it, I might not know what to make of it. Take this. You can use it to capture whatever you find, and then send it to me. Thank you. I will let you know what I find. And I look forward to our meeting again. Sorry, I don't mean to bother you, but I couldn't help but notice you were speaking with the Hotari this whole time. I figured it might be useful if I offered another perspective. Of course. I have to say, I fully expected you to side with the Hotari, but obviously the Federation wants a steady supply of dilithium, something only we can offer. Without a Lydian involvement, there is no dilithium trade. Left to the Hotari, it would be nothing short of a disaster. We're not on either side. Our only interest is the peaceful resolution to this conflict. As is ours. Of course, the question is, at what price? A major solid Arminta, Special Attaché, Lydian Armed Forces. Pleasure to meet you, Commander. I have my issues with the Hotari, but I have to give them some credit. They know how to seize an opportunity. Inciting an uprising the same day as a massive once-in-a-lifetime ion storm. Our assumption was that this storm was just an anomaly. Yes, a very convenient anomaly. At least, that was what we were told. <clears throat> Of course, I wasn't there. But who am I to say otherwise? Something tells me there's more to the story. So what really happened? Well, the official story is that it was the storm that enabled the revolt. How else do a bunch of unarmed, unorganized miners seize control of an entire moon, much less thousands of mines? But I've talked to people who were there. They tell a different story. They say they're lucky to have escaped with their lives. That it was more than just the storm. That somehow the miners were able to harness the energy from the storm. I know it sounds crazy. I'm not even sure I believe it myself. But that's what they said. Hmm. You said the Hotari were primitive. Well, they are. Except for the part about weaponizing ion storms. If you'll excuse me, Commander Ryder. They seem proud of their culture. Pride can lead to rash action. 
So, ist hier noch irgendwas zu begutachten? Nö. An Elidian Warship. The Zeldi. They must want the Hotari to know they can use it at any time. But why haven't they? That must be Tau. The place it all started. Such rough terrain. No wonder the Hotari are so tough. Kommen da auch noch durch? Nein, der ganze Weg umsonst. Well, that was a disaster. What happened? The Hotari refused to concede anything, so the Elidians stormed out. The Hotari did not invite us here as peacekeepers. I hope your efforts were more fruitful than ours. Gravitational harmonics failing to resolve. Warp bubble stability degrading. Increase output to maximum. Increasing warp output to maximum. It's happening again. It is evident that presently the Resolute cannot achieve warp propulsion. Since our diagnostics rule out any problems with our warp systems or anything about the ship, the problem appears to be the fabric of space itself. Space itself? You're saying something about this region of space prevents warp travel? Prevents it, or can't sustain it. However improbable, that appears to be the case. We need to know more. The storm didn't stop us from leaving space dock and traveling here. But could it still be causing this interference with warp travel? We must follow sound investigatory principles. Do not let an assumed conclusion drive your analysis. Sometimes we need a little inspired thinking, Mr. Chovak. Captain Solano is on his way back from the negotiations, and I want to have some answers for him when he gets here. Indeed. Given the facts at hand, we may be able to deploy subspace probes around the ship to construct a clear picture of the phenomenon. Around the ship? I'll prep a shuttle. Oi, 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 oi. I'm setting up a waypoint at a distance roughly corresponding to the edge of our warp field. When we get there, I'll deploy the first probe. Vorwärts, rückwärts, drehen. Q und E. Okay. So, wo muss ich denn hin? Da drüben. Q ist runter. Mhm. Kann man auch schneller irgendwie? Nö, ne? Commander Westbrook. The Resolute systems are calibrated to receive the probe's readings. We are standing by to reproduce the warp field collapse after the first probe is deployed. Thank you, Mr. Chovak. We'll be in position shortly. And, Mr. Diaz, do take care in piloting the shuttlecraft. Now is not the time to indulge in the human penchant for joyriding. Chovak probably isn't such a fun guy to work for, huh? Uh, Lieutenant Commander Chovak's not so bad. You know, once you get used to him. And, uh, 
I've learned a lot working under him. I have a feeling I'm going to have to work harder. Schön, wie sich der Shuttle auch einfach immer irgendwo hin bewegt, wenn man, wenn man mit der Maus nichts macht. Gegenlenkt. Ich will nicht nach rechts, das will der Shuttle. Westbrook here. The first probe is deployed. Understood. We are reading it. We are about to replay the simulation. <sighs> Problem? I just can't get a handle on her. Commander Rydeck. She rejected my plan to use a deflector pulse against the storm surge. But on the other, she did listen to my advice and use the whole polarity trick to get you through that excursion alive. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with the new XO. I'm sure she's a fine officer, even if we don't see eye to eye. But she didn't go through what the rest of us did. You know that. And it's hard to figure out why she'd be the one Solano chose instead of, well, one of us. I've heard some good things. You should at least give her a chance. I'll take that under advisement. Test is running. Warp field collapse in three, two, one, mark. Okay. Oh. All right, that is definitely a problem with the fabric of space. We need to get another probe out there. With two points of data, resolute in the probe, we've managed to get an interference pattern. I'm setting a waypoint to a particularly strong area of interference. We'll deploy the second probe there. Listen. I'm gonna give you a piece of advice I wish someone had given me. Make sure you're never just one thing. And don't get so focused on what's in front of your face that you lose sight of the big picture. Before Rydex showed up, the captain pulled me into his ready room and told me he didn't think I had the people skills to be first officer. <laughs> what a load of crap. I mean, if he'd said that about Chovak, sure. Well, if you're asking, I think you're a people person. After all, here we are, me, an enlisted officer, you, one of the senior staff, talking like old buddies. I should send Solano to talk to you. <laughs> Bring him on. I'm sure you can handle him. You've got potential. You're a capable engineer. You're good in the field. Keep up the good work, and who knows, a solid jack of all departments like you could be commander-in-chief of Starfleet one day. Hell, Admiral Jellico started as a shuttle pilot. And there are places to go in the enlisted ranks, too. You know, I'd be the best leader Starfleet ever had. Lower decks always have to fix all the problems command causes. Maybe I'd just save everybody some steps. Well, don't forget about us little people when you're running things. Of course not. You gotta remember where you came from. <clears throat> Here, this is close enough. Stop the engines. Deploying the probe. Westbrook to Commander Chovak. We're ready for another sampling of data. Very good. Running the simulation again. Warp field collapse in three, two, one. There it is again. I saw it. It seems to be directional. Well, what about the scans? Anything? Here's the readings in relation to our local space. We've got the Resolute, Otari Prime, and the probes. All this interference is overloading the sensor buffers. We're gonna have to triangulate the sensors manually. If 
We got something. These markers indicate peaks in the gravimetric interference patterns. Let's see if I can find some more. Okay. Attends. Hold up. This is coming from the moon. A beam that blocks warp travel. Aimed right at us. Someone is doing this intentionally. I don't know how they're doing it. This is like nothing I've ever seen. We're under attack and we didn't even know it. We need to stop them. Unplug whatever it is they're hitting us with. Now, look here. It's our current readings of the ion storm. These concentrations. Line up with the interference pattern. The storm and this beam, they're coming from the same place. Carter, whatever petty local conflict brought us here, it's just a small part of something much bigger. Presently, we don't have an explanation for how. So, before this next chapter started. Würde ich sagen, mit Blick auf die Uhr haben wir ganz knapp über 30 Minuten. Ich wollte ja die Videos ursprünglich mal bei 30 Minuten äh, belassen. Von daher hier wieder ein Cut. Und äh, ja, meine 30 Minuten klappen nicht immer ganz, weil ich mich, wie gesagt, auf die, auf die Kapitel konzentriere, weil nur dort Speicherpunkte sind. Ähm, ich würde aber sagen, hier, wie gesagt, den Cut. Und ähm, ja, wenn ihr mögt, verfolgen wir die Story gerne beim nächsten Mal weiter. Sagt mir gerne, was ihr davon haltet. Ähm, von der Story, von dem Spiel an sich. Eigentlich ist es wirklich nur eine, eine Story mit, ich klicke mal 1, 2, 3. Ähm, ja, man kann natürlich so ein bisschen beeinflussen, wer, wer irgendwie gut oder nicht so gut zu einem steht. Aber ähm, ob das wirkliche Auswirkungen hat, das, das sehen wir halt erst, äh, erst deutlich später. Genau, mit dem Shuttleflug hatte ich gehofft, dass da noch ein bisschen Action reinkommt, aber das war im Grunde ja wieder nur das Fadenkreuz. Fadenkreuz. Äh, so ein bisschen in der Mitte behalten, weil es sich von alleine wieder wegdreht. Ähm, ja, finde ich persönlich ist nicht ganz so spannend. Die Story an sich ist nicht so verkehrt, ähm, aber für ein Spiel weiß ich nicht. Also wir werden es auf jeden Fall durchziehen bis zum Ende. Ähm, genau, falls ihr auch wissen möchtet, worum es letztendlich geht und ähm, ja, was hinter all dem steckt und ihr das Spiel vielleicht nicht selber kaufen wollt. Ähm, allerdings könnt ihr dann auch die Entscheidung natürlich nicht selber treffen. Genau, wir werden aber weiter reingucken und wenn ihr mögt, geht sollte ich gerne wieder dazu. Und bis dahin sage ich vielen Dank fürs Zusehen und ja, bis zum nächsten Mal. Ciao.